The Reincarnation of the Creation Energy of the Human Being by Paul Saleh September 22, 2023 What All Human Beings of Earth Must Know Human of Earth, if you are of the opinion that death is the end of your spirit, your life, and your continued existence, then you are greatly mistaken. Truly, it isn't so what most people falsely assume with regard to this. It is also not so what you secretly fear, that with your death your entire existence ends, and everything is irretrievably lost and extinguished. Because in truth, after death there is a continuation of life for you. And the reason for this is a fine spiritual energetic factor within yourself, the spirit form, which on the one hand is ordered into the cycle of rebirth, and on the other hand makes it possible that you, after death, will be born again with a new consciousness as a new personality. Asterisk taken from Figu Bulletin No. 78. What All Human Beings of Earth Should Know If the human beings on this earth as a whole would understand the reality and its truth, that the human creation energy is an eternally evolving, reincarnating factor of the creation itself, and therefore will be reborn again and again into new human beings and personalities of the same personality lineage of the creation energy form that enlivens them. Here on Earth, unless a future personality travels to another planet and dies there, thereby entering into the cycle of rebirth on that world, then surely life here would look very different. For a start, I think we would think twice about destroying the only home world that we know through our excessive, rampant overpopulation and the overburdening might it increasingly exerts on the planet as a whole. The atmosphere, geological structures, climate, mountains, forests, oceans, wetlands, etc., and the countless myriads of life forms of the fauna and flora that inhabit these precious, ecologically important habitats. The amount of known and unknown life forms of every kind that are being tragically wiped out by human overpopulation is truly shocking, and yet, there are still the clever, know it all Shindankers that continue to dispute this truth pathetically believing to stand high above the creation. It's love and it's logic. Nonetheless, in time, we will see how clever we really are as the effects of our insanity consequently unfold before our sleepy eyes. The human beings have within themselves, as the life force of the body and consciousness, a creation energy part piece, an eternally evolving, reincarnating factor of the creation universal consciousness itself. This creation energy will continue to enliven new human beings into the future until the time comes when it the creation energy form no longer requires a material body for its further evolution and thereby transitions into a finer state of existence. The personality respectively the material consciousness block of the human being as is the case with the physical body, does not reincarnate, which any reasonable thinking person should realize if the matter is thoroughly considered. In repetition, the personality does not reincarnate, but only the eternally evolving creation energy is ordered into the law of rebirth and continued existence far into the all-timeless endlessness of being. Repetition is the mother of all learning. And to really learn about these matters of the creation energy and consciousness of the human being here is an excerpt from the 680th Contact Monday the 7th of May 2017 13.07 by Billy Edward Albert Meyer. It is fully unclear to many human beings whether there exists a life after death because they are unable to explain how their consciousness is produced. I have already learned in my early years from your father Svath, as also later and until today repeatedly from the storage banks of Nocodemian, that for the existence of the consciousness, the information exchange between the material human consciousness and the spirit-energetic world of the creation-universal consciousness 
is responsible. Until now, no earthling could explain this. Consequently, also nobody could truly teach that also after death, a consciousness impulse energetically further exists, however not actual any more. But as said, in the form of impulse-related consciousness energy and knowledge, and indeed stored in the storage banks, whilst on the other hand the contents of the material consciousness after the dying is dissolved in the realm of the overall consciousness block, after which, for the next following personality, a new consciousness and a new subconsciousness, and precisely a new personality is created, and this is then born as a new block. Unfortunately, the human beings resist these explanations, and indeed, in particular, the scientists which occupy themselves with these matters, because their consciousness resists the explanations, which to them are incomprehensible. In actual fact, the material world is not everything, because indeed there is more than just the material. If we use quantum physics as an aid, then this offers us decisive evidence and proof in far deeper forms that still much more exists than just the material and visible, but indeed also all of that which is detached from the material world and space and time and exists in pure spirit energetic realms. And this world is not simply the reflection of the inner world of the human being, but rather fundamentally it represents the entire spirit energy construct of the creation, respectively the creation universal consciousness. Nevertheless, both of these world forms, so the material and the creation energetic worlds, are intimately connected with one another. Consequently, an intensive information exchange prevails between them. And this information exchange takes place through the realms of the storage banks and the overall consciousness block, which is also that which creates the consciousness of the human being and which ensures a new consciousness after the dying in the death life. When we look at our universe, then we see that a salient creativity arises from it, out of which in endless diversity continuously new arises, and precisely with that the inner and the other side world comes into play. From the human being's perspective, everything new in the universe arises in the material world. However, this is fundamentally false, because firstly, each and everything arises in impulse-related spirit energetic form, and thereby the information exchange of the spirit energetic world with the material world is created. It must, however, be heeded that everything in the spirit energetic world of the creation universal consciousness endures for all great times, while in the material world everything old and new is inevitably transient. Fundamentally, everything in the material world has at some time arisen, yet it has also again passed away. However, even when everything that ever was in the material world has since disappeared, so remained and remains everything of the spirit energetic world in existence for all great times and represents a perfect memory that can never be erased and can never cease to be. Consequently, it is everlasting and endures through all of the ten to the power of forty-nine creation forms and all six absolutum forms up until the being absolutum. The material body of the human being is extremely active and generates ever anew at the molecular level. So therefore also the changing of the manifold life forms is also the organic changing of the human being. Thereby ensues also the information exchange with the spirit energetic world. Consequently, every human being, as well as every other life form, has aside from the transient material body also an immortal body in the inner world, which is connected with the spirit energy world of the creation universal consciousness. Every material body indeed dies at some point, yet with death only the material activity of the material consciousness and with that of the body ends, whereby then it becomes subject to decomposition. However, the immortal spirit energy form survives death which means that out of that in connection with a new material body, new life arises out of death. 
That also clarifies the question of how the consciousness is produced, because if this was fully created by the brain, then death would be the absolute end of everything. Therefore, the claim of the neurology research is totally false. That, on account of the lack of knowledge with regard to the spirit energetic impulses, out of which, from the realm of the entire consciousness block, the new consciousness arises, the consciousness would arise from the activity of the neurons. If we look at the work of the human consciousness, then it can actually be spoken of that it creates abstract information, which appears in the language center of the brain, which then forms as thoughts which are expressed as words, and then produce feelings. And this abstract information doesn't come about through the activity of the neurons, but through the information exchange with the spirit energetic world. This could not as yet be shown, despite the intensive efforts of neurological science. Effectively, the information is provided through the information exchange between the spirit energetic realm of the creation universal consciousness and the material consciousness, whereby this factor then leads to information coming up repeatedly in the active brain of the human being, as is also the case with regard to ideas which manifest in the subconsciousness. As I have described spirit teaching related in the article Origin of the Idea, See Ur 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 Ursprung aller Existenz, page 37 and Diversicum, page 371. Therefore, it doesn't simply deal with information which comes from the inner of the body, respectively the neurons, although this and the entire brain itself nevertheless play a very important role because the neurons and the brain block ensure that the unconsciously received information is ordered and coherently combined. All of this together produces the material consciousness. Respectively, its content, respectively, the intimate connections between the spirit energy realm as well as the activity and the contents of the material consciousness and the workings of the brain. Entirely certain is therefore that the material consciousness of the human being is not produced by the brain, but out of the spirit energetic world of the so-called universal consciousness, or the creation universal consciousness, whereby the entirety regarding this embodies none other than an impulse storer of spirit energetic electromagnetic nature, which is only called universal consciousness respectively creation universal consciousness for the sake of human understanding. And this is therefore the key to life after death in the death life, whereby in the beyond realm of the entire consciousness block the information balance of the human consciousness is dissolved, after which the entire consciousness block creates a new content potential as a new consciousness block which then, as the material consciousness together with a likewise new subconsciousness, as well as with the new personality, is born in a new human body. The information block of the human consciousness, like the body, doesn't survive death. Consequently, after death, it is no longer the brain that arranges the ordered composition of a new consciousness, but the entire consciousness block which in its existence is creation energy form conditioned and also is integrated into the universal consciousness. That means that after death, the contents of the consciousness are completely dissolved by the entire consciousness block and a new consciousness is created, which is completely different from the previous consciousness. Therefore it is thus certain that, after the death of the human being, this human being doesn't newly appear through a rebirth. That, however, life nevertheless doesn't end with death and also never will end, because through the entire consciousness block the content of the old consciousness is erased and a new consciousness with new content is created. The life of the human being and of all life forms in the universal expanse, as also the universe itself, are so created that life is never subject to an ultimate passing away after death. Every life form has a spirit form, respectively a creation energy form, which as an inseparable part of the universe is rebirth capable up until the highest absolutum form 
and indeed up until the mergence with the being absolutum. If the human being, all life forms of fauna and flora, as well as the universe, etc., arose out of pure chance, as is claimed by stubborn and ignorant scientists, then this would really be quite strange and would make no sense as also the all-great timely, respectively, the eternal life of the rebirth-capable spirit form would make no sense. Also, the dissolution of the material consciousness and the complete decomposition of the human body and all life in general, after the death, as well as the new birth of a new body with a new consciousness, subconsciousness and a new personality would make no sense. The spirit energetic world, that with the human being and all life forms of the fauna and flora as spirit form respectively, creation energy form, enlivens the material body with the human being with its seat in the collicular superior of the brain, brings the very important aspect into play, through which namely the cycle completes itself and gives the whole a coherent overall picture. The entire information exchange between all of the distinct material consciousness forms, instinct consciousness forms and impulse consciousness forms, as well as the creation energy realms of the universal consciousness respectively. The creation energy world ensures that in the entire universe, inevitably ever more complex life forms emerge. That shows once again that the human beings and human-like as well as also all myriads of the most diverse other life forms of all genera and species of the fauna and flora haven't arisen by chance, but an order is behind it which corresponds to an impulse order. And this proves in turn that all earthly and universe-wide life of every form, genus and species also continues on after death in new forms and absolutely has a sense. And to this I can recite the following, that I hear, just a moment, yes, here it is, have written. When a human being has died, respectively is effectively dead, then he or she cannot be enlivened again. A reanimation is only then possible, when the human has not yet died, respectively isn't dead. Consequently, the spirit, respectively, the spirit form, hasn't yet left the body. If the human being, however, has in fact died and therefore dead, then his or her spirit, respectively his or her spirit form, has already escaped from the body. Consequently, therefore, a reanimation can no longer take place. The spirit, respectively the spirit form, only enlivens a living body, and indeed on the twenty-first day after conception. If, however, the body is dead, then the spirit form doesn't return to this because it never enlivens a dead body. A spirit form can never lose its energy and power, because it is ordered into the er-eternal energies and powers of the creation, which as the universal consciousness energetically encompasses everything. Thereby it is also said that the spirit form is immortal and is inseparably connected with the creation universal consciousness. With regard to the human being, this is solely enlivened by the spirit form, and when he or she dies, then the spirit form shifts over into its beyond realm. The spirit form remains in this beyond realm until it, on account of the fact that it alone is reincarnation-able, respectively rebirth-able, again returns into a human body and enlivens it when a new human being with a new personality is born. It is said explicitly, therefore, that a new human with a new consciousness and with a new personality incarnates, because the old consciousness and the old personality of the deceased human being are dissolved into pure, fine substance energy in the beyond realm by the overall consciousness block. Out of this neutral energy, a new consciousness and a new personality are formed by the overall consciousness block. These are then, along with the reincarnating spirit form, are born into the new human body, respectively the fetus. The spirit form always only enlivens the same lineage of spirit and human, 
respectively their consciousness and personality, which through the overall consciousness block are inseparably connected with the spirit form. Therefore it is given that always the same overall consciousness block connected spirit form enlivens the consciousness and personality lineage connected with it. Out of this arises that when the human being dies, the consciousness and the personality of this human being are not reborn. Consequently, there is no rebirth of the human being, but only a rebirth, respectively reincarnation of the spirit form. This is because the consciousness and the personality of the deceased human being are dissolved and transformed into pure, fine substance neutral energy by the overall consciousness block in its beyond realm. Out of this neutral energy a new consciousness with a new personality is formed, which then with the incarnation of the new human being is born into this human, together with the reincarnating spirit form. The reincarnation of the spirit form and the incarnation of the new consciousness and the new personality occurs on the twenty-first day after conception. To localize and detect the human spirit slash creation energy, at least in the present time, is impossible for the human beings, because they have at their disposal neither the necessary apparatuses nor other means to be able to detect and measure the spirit slash creation energy. The human spirit, respectively, the spirit form cannot be seen by the human being because the pure creational spirit energy cannot be perceived by the human eye, as also it cannot be sensed. Also, there are not yet any apparatuses or analyses, etc., also not in the realms of the ultraviolet or infrared, through which it would be possible to make the spirit, respectively, the spirit form, or the creational spirit energy visible or measurable. There is also no special consciousness state of the human being which makes it possible to see the spirit, respectively the spirit form, because the spirit energy is as invisible as the pure air. The spirit, respectively, the spirit form of the human being is pure creation energetic nature and has nothing to do with the consciousness as well as nothing to do with the brain waves, which can be perceived and measured. Erroneously, since time immemorial, the consciousness has been designated as the spirit of the human being, although the spirit, however, is of a completely different nature than the consciousness. The spirit. Respectively, the spirit form of the human being is pure creational, while the consciousness is a factor of the human being and is responsible for the thoughts to be created whereby the entire ratio arises out of that, so therefore also the reason and the rationality. The spirit, respectively the spirit form on the other hand, is solely the creational nature-wise given energy which enlivens the human body. When the spirit leaves the human body, then it escapes into its beyond realm, which exists in the same space as the present reality of the planet whereby the so-called beyond realm is differently dimensioned than the real material reality space, and indeed in fine substance spirit energetic nature. Regarding the planet, the beyond realm is ordered around it, as this realm is also existing universe-wide, however compared to the material reality realm in a fine substance to which the human being as a material life form in no way has access to and consequently cannot see or perceive anything. Therefore it is impossible for the human being to see or perceive in this realm the spirit, respectively, the spirit form which has left the human body. That the beyond realm of the planet in other dimensioned form from the real material reality space is not only ordered into this, but also into the entire universe has its reason. So it is stated in the spirit teaching that if a planet is destroyed or simply becomes unable to support life, that then the existing spirit forms and other fallow spirit energies are not eliminated, but they wander off and wander through space until a new planet is found where human life exists. The spirit forms then settle on this planet and mix with the spirit forms that already exist there, 
and so find their way again, respectively continuing in a cycle of reincarnation, respectively rebirth. And finally, a poem from Billy, taken from the book Le Ben and Todd, Life and Death in German only. Nicht ist des Lebens Tod ein Ende, sondern neuer Anfang und Beginn, denn der Tod reicht dir die Hände zu einem neuen, besseren Leben hin, in Wiedergeburt sich neu entfaltend, sich ans Gesetz der Schöpfung haltend. The life's death is not the end, but a new start and beginning, because death reaches you its hands to a new, better life in rebirth, newly unfolding, holding fast to the law of the creation.